But here we can see Matab going through and trying to use the rib command. Looks like maybe he ran into a little bit of a problem there. The first one went through no problem, but now... Wow, look at that. He did a circular pattern and the rib extended on the circular pattern. Holy smokes, guys. Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome to another CAD vs. CAD tournament highlight. One of the more common questions we get is how did these guys get so fast? And I can say that many of the competitors that we see in this tournament are regular members on our website, twotalltoby.com. On this website, you can sign up for our Practice Models app where you'll find over 200 2D to 3D practice models, very similar to what we see here in the tournament. So if you want to get fast enough to enter the next CAD vs. CAD tournament, be sure to sign up over at twotalltoby.com. Get started on your practice models journey. And of course, be sure to like this video. Be sure to let me know down in the comments what you thought about the battle and what you thought about this model. Let's not belabor this any further. Here we go. We're giving this thing a spin. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I can't wait to see what the Wheel of Fate has in store for the runners today. Okay. Well, the Wheel of Fate has spoken, Corey. So here we go, guys. This next cat battle, this is going to be a good one. This is model number 13. This next cat battle between James, our number five seed from Australia using Onshape. And Matab, our number one seed, using SolidWorks from Bangladesh. This CAD vs. CAD battle begins in three, two, one, go! What is the mass of this part in XXX pounds? We got two pounds models right in a row. I think these might Freedom be the units for the win, man. Might be the only two <laughs> pounds and inches model. This is in inches. It's an ABS, and this is a plastic injection molded part. It has draft all around. It's got typical eight degrees draft. Uh, very easy to see eight degrees draft, and this would be a drafted part, a molded part, an injection molded part. Let's take a look at how our runners are modeling this. They both grabbed a screen capture. And they're both now going through. It looks like they're both kind of starting in a similar location, looking down on this thing from the top plane and turning it into a boss extrusion. And we see that Matab, as he's creating the geometry, he's actually adding the draft during the extrusion. Uh, we see that James on the left, on the other hand, decided to maybe create it as a solid, and then he's shelling it out. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he added the draft or not. Maybe he did add the Oh, yeah, he did. I can see it tapered there on James's mm -hmm. screen. So they both added the draft as they were creating that uh, extrusion. I like that. I like that. And they're both now uh, attempting to get this thing into place. James going through, adding some fillets there. Matab looks like he decided to add those fillets and then and then hollow the thing out. I think that was a pretty solid approach there from Matab, getting those uh, fillets on there and then hollowing that thing out. And now we get into kind of the second phase of this design, the inner shapes got that kind yep. of circular boss sticking up through the middle which has draft you've got the uh, ribs that are sticking up through the middle and of course when you're injection molding something the the draft will often kind of go in two different directions along the same face one for the inner face and one for the outer face so that it can be ejected from an a side b side cavity so this is pretty interesting this part here it's not like you can just make a ring and then extrude it with the draft you almost have to do it in two features yeah, James is adding that draft now, and it looks like, you know, when he was running with that fillet, it's it's definitely an order of operations thing I've run into before doing some of your practice models. If you if you add that shell after you've added the fillet, then it'll automatically fill it that inside, which is a really cool workflow, especially if you're in these CAD competitions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that the, the uh, challenge here is going to be the kind of notation on the print. You may notice that on the print, there's a notation that says that those fillets are not conical that they are true radius fillets. And so again, comes down to order of operations. And yep. uh, sometimes, you know, depending on the machinist, they will prefer one versus the other. Like if they've got a tapered end mill that they can just rip around that corner on, then they're gonna want it to be conical because that's gonna yep. make it easier for them to machine it. But on the other hand, if they're doing like multi-axis milling and they, they, for some reason, prefer for that to be constant radius or maybe functionally it needs to be, then you might receive a different note like what we see on this print. Well, and then how many times are you going to have to change a tool, too? That's the I know that's what makes a lot of people <laughs> not like certain models or certain parts. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I think the lesson here is that you really if you're entering into the world of manufacturing, you will save yourself and your team a lot of money if you develop a good relationship with your machinists, a good relationship with your manufacturing team. And you kind of have these conversations and figure out, you know, what is considered standard. But here we can see Matab going through and trying to use the rib command. Looks like maybe he ran into a little bit of a problem there. The first one went through no problem, but now, 
Wow, look at that. He did a circular pattern and the rib extended on the circular pattern. Holy smokes, guys. That was a pro level move. Wow, yeah. wow, wow. Matab. Shout out to Matab. He really did nice there. That was cool. That was a he did a circular pattern of the rib and the pattern instance actually extended. Wow, wow, wow. And so Matab looking over the model, and it looks like he may be coming in with an answer here. And we're going to keep an eye on the chat and see what his answer is. And Matab coming into the chat with an answer, 0 0.777 pounds. And that is not correct. That is not correct. So unfortunately, Strike Matab, one. that is not correct. He got the answer first, but it is not correct. So he's going to have to keep going through and trying to figure out what's missing. He's going to look at his drawing. He's going to look at his model, but that is not correct. Shout out to Pico Boo in the chat. What is up, my friend? And Vice, you want to remember that we're not going to be helping these guys out, okay? We want to try to keep this as friendly as possible. We want to let these guys figure it out. So let's make sure that we don't, we don't, uh, you know, share share any tips or tricks or anything. It's up to these runners to figure out what's going on in this competition. Absolutely. And look at James using intersection. I just made a video on intersection the other day, and he's just right away embracing it. Yeah, intersection's a, a fun one, and you got to have the right part to make it work. But once it, you're like, oh my god, why am I going to use this for everything? <laughs> like, it's amazing. And Turbine Taruk in the chat says, you got this, James. Yes, indeed, James, you got this, my friend. Yeah, we want to see a third match, right? That's what that's what everybody's hoping for. Usually. Everybody wants to see the third <laughs> match, exactly. That's what we're always hoping for. Yep. And John G in the chat says, pressure on the tab. Yes, indeed. J Miles. All right, guys, we're keeping an eye on Matab. It looks like what Matab's strategy here is, is to, he's really kind of checking and double checking and making sure that he's not missing anything. He doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to overlook anything obvious uh, that might end up costing him. And James coming into the chat, 0 0.781 pounds. That is not correct. That is not correct. So both of our runners have answered one time. So both of our runners get to go through and try to answer again. And Matab coming into the chat, 0 0.781. Seven, five, four pounds. And Corey, we got ourselves a finalist that is correct. 0 0.754 pounds, plus or minus 0 0.002 pounds. Wow, wow, wow. GG to Matab. Congratulations, super fast once again on both of those models. A little bit more complicated than the models from last week, but wow, 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 good game to Matab. Good game to both of our runners in that battle. But my goodness, Matab, absolutely crushing. Ran into a couple of hiccups there, went back through, figured out what the problem was. It looked like in that one, he was missing that fillet on the bottom of the model. He just needed to go through and add in that fillet, and he was able to figure out how to do it without blowing up.